Are you shopping for a small LED light? How about one that is waterproof, you can run over it with your car, and you can mount it just about anywhere? Sound interesting? Let's have a look. Today we're having a look at the Luminate Kelvin light, and we're gonna take you through all of the features and benefits of this light, all of the things that I absolutely love about it, as well as a few things that could be improved upon, and in fact have been improved upon in subsequent models. I originally backed this project when it was a crowdfunding campaign, and I mostly picked it up because of the weatherproof and waterproof features of this light. But then I kind of put it on the shelf because I didn't do any shoots that were in bad weather, I didn't do any underwater diving or anything like that, so it kind of sat on the shelf for a long time. That is until I was on the set of a indie feature very recently called The Lost One, and it was set in a very urban and industrial style area, and that's where these lights really shone. We use these lights as prac lights, we use them as handheld fill lights, so over the course of that shoot I've discovered just how incredible this small little light actually is. All right, enough waffle. Now let's get onto the review where I'll take you through a lot of the features and benefits that make this light so incredibly useful. To start off with, this light is an IP68 waterproof fixture, which means it can be fully submerged for up to 30 minutes at up to 10 meters in depth. This is also an incredibly rigid light. It's shockproof, and I've actually seen in other videos, I've seen people run over these with cars and the lights have completely survived. Like, they got away with just a couple of scratches or scuffs, they didn't even crack the plastic housing, which to me is just incredible. So they're very, very tough and durable rugged lights. This light also has a long life battery of up to seven hours of continuous use. And I certainly did find that on the feature film set, this was lasting for quite a long time. We were using it at maximum output most of the time. So we didn't quite get the full seven hours, but we just topped the battery up over lunch. And most of the time it would run you know, the entire day with that little top up in the middle. It's also a bicolor light. So as you can see here, we have our tungsten setting at 3000 degrees Kelvin. Double tap the button on the end and you cycle over to your daylight setting at 5500 degrees Kelvin. And both seem to have a fairly comparable amount of output with the daylight being slightly brighter. I think I measured it at up to 260 lux at one meter and at tungsten it measured 180 lux at one meter. So a little bit more output if you're using the daylight setting which is what we were using most of the time. So the LEDs in this light are a very high quality source of LED and uh, there's a row of LEDs here that are beneath this layer of diffusion. So this is a nice diffused light source, which is great for a fill light or a backlight. And these LEDs are 95 plus CRI, so they're very high quality. You know you're not going to get any green or magenta shifts. It's a color that you know you can rely on, so I really appreciate that about these lights. I'm very picky when it comes to CRI. So it's a fairly simple design. Um, it has one button on the end here, which you can press to turn the light on and off. If you double press that button, it will cycle between your daylight and uh, tungsten color temperatures. If you press and hold the button, it will dim the light up and down. Now, it can be a little bit tricky to be precise with this one button system. Um, you kind of have to guess when the light will start to dim and then take your finger off at exactly the right level of brightness. There's no like control knob or um, output indicator that you can use to really set uh, a specific output, uh, which is a little bit annoying. That can be remedied somewhat with the included remote control. Now, that's one of the benefits of the remote control, but there's a lot of things about this remote control that I find a little bit annoying. The first thing being it has an on and off button, which will not work unless you've turned the light on first. Once you've turned it on, it will then turn the light on and off and then you can control the output, dimming it up or down, which is a lot slower. So you do have more precision there, but it takes a long time to get the full brightness down to its lowest setting. And you can also switch between your cool whites, your daylight 
and your warm white, which is your tungsten settings. Another little quirk with this remote control is it's not specifically paired with any one light. So I have two fixtures. And uh, if I've got the one remote control on set, it will sometimes, if the lights are close to one another, it will affect both of the lights or it will pick one or the other, depending on which one is closer. It will kind of grab onto the closest light, which can be a little bit annoying if you're accidentally pointing it at the wrong light. So it's a very basic remote control. I think it's just a normal infrared style remote. And in the newer versions of the Luminate, which is the Luminate Spectrum, they've actually gone app base, which I think is a much better system. And if I get my hands on one of those, I look forward to checking out that functionality. So let me know down in the comments below if you would like to see a review on that version of this light, the Luminate Spectrum, which is the full RGB version. So let's talk about a few ways that you can mount this light, which is how this light really comes to life. It's one of the most ingenious things about it is the multiple mounting options that you have. Now, to start with one of the more basic ones is you have a D-ring on the top of the light. So you can suspend the light or hang the light, hang it off a piece of string or on, off a hook or something like that and suspend it that way. On the bottom of the light, it has a quarter 20 mounting screw. So you can basically attach this light to just about anything. It comes with an included cold shoe adapter so you can screw that onto the bottom of the light like so and then mount that vertically onto the top of your camera but my personal favorite mounting option with this light is these things here these are two clip-on mounts so two of these come with each of the lights so you simply snap them on to the light like so and on the bottom here they both have a quarter 20 again, so you can mount them to virtually anything, including the uh, cold shoot attachment. So you can put that on there, slide that to the center of the light and you can mount it horizontally. But the real magic in this is that these are magnetic and you can basically mount this to any metal surface. And this is how we mounted the light 90% of the time on the feature shoot that we were on. So to give you an idea, here's just a double header attachment that I've got here, boom snaps on, it's really lightweight, so you can just position that however you want, and that just clips on just like so. So this is how we were mounting this light all over the place, mounting it to roofs, mounting it to walls, mounting it to all kinds of weird and wonderful places, mounting it to cars and vans and cages. It really is a great uh, mounting option uh, that I just absolutely fell in love with. So that is my favorite thing about this particular light. So they are the different ways you can mount the light. Uh, it also is just a great handheld practical light. So you could hand this to an actor so that they can walk around a set with it if it's the right kind of film. Alternately, you can just give this to a crew member. If you're in a run and gun situation and you need a fill light or a backlight in a hurry, you can just pop it in their hand, hold it out like so, and you've got yourself a fill light really quick and easy. All right, so now that we've talked about our mounting points, let's have a look at how this light uses its power system. So if you unscrew the bottom cap here, you will see that there are two ports on the base of this light. You have a full-sized USB-A port and you have a micro USB port. Now the full-size USB-A port can use the light's internal battery as a power bank, which is a funky idea and you can use it to charge your phone or some other device. But what I have noticed in my tests is that that drains the light's battery very, very quickly. So you're not gonna get a lot of charge out of this light. That leads to my next point, which is charging time. Now this uses micro USB and the charge time on this light is really, really long. Um, to give you an idea, I get home from set after a day's worth of shooting. I'd put this light on charge before going to bed. And when I wake up in the morning, ready to go to set again, this light had not fully charged. It was getting up to around the 75% mark. So this light takes a very, very long time to go from fully dead to full capacity again. And what I'll actually do is I'll do a test for charging time and I'll use two different chargers. I'll use a five volt one amp and a five volt two amp USB, normal USB charger that you charge your phone with. And I'll let you know here how long it took each of those chargers to bring this light up to full charge. Now this is something that I believe they've addressed with the newer models, the Spectrum and the full Spectrum models. 
uh, they've replaced that micro USB with USB-C, which should have significantly decreased recharge time. So that's something I'm really glad to see fixed because that is probably my biggest gripe with this light, which in every other way virtually is an excellent, excellent small LED light. Couple of other random accessories that this light does come with. It comes with this soft little velvet style slip case, which doesn't offer that much in the way of protection, but I guess if you can run over this light with a car, probably doesn't need a highly padded case. It also comes with this, a little like, lanyard thing, which I don't know what you would use this for. I guess if you need to uh, suspend it from somewhere easily, you can attach this into the lanyard hole, which is just next to the D-ring here. So there are two other accessories that this light comes with. So one of the things I would have liked to have seen included with this kit to contain all the little bits and pieces and accessories as well as the light is some kind of case or bag. Because this light is an odd shape and it comes with a lot of little sort of fiddly accessories, they can be easily lost and it can be hard to find a space in your existing kits. So I'll probably build out a custom case for these two lights. Certainly not a deal breaker, but it would have been nice. If you're looking at picking up one of these lights, you're looking at a cost of 135 USD per light. And each light comes with its set of its own accessories. So there you have it guys, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more reviews of other Luminate products, let me know down in the comments. If you liked this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to see more tutorials and reviews just like this one. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next video.